All right, welcome. We're going to start a forward bending practice today, and we're going to kind of take the lens of creating space for those forward bends by borrowing space from the back body. So we'll do a lot of targeted poses today to lengthen the back body so that we can finish with a deep forward bend and maybe feel a little bit more freedom and uh, spaciousness in that pose. So because it's the 11th, we're gonna start with um, the non-dominant cross-legged position. So whatever like, cross-legged position you prefer typically, just um, alternate to the opposite side and then take some time with that seated position, rotate the thighs, inner thighs down, the outer thighs up and try to give yourself as much support as you need under the sitting bones so that your lower back can feel tall and not rounded out. And then press down somewhere to not only bring a sense of buoyancy to the torso, but also to align the shoulders above the hips and to pull the skull back gently to align with the spine. And then feeling your chest lift and spread Join the hands without the shoulders coming forward. Closing the eyes and lowering the gaze away from the brain. And it's important we take this time before any yoga practice to really drop in and try to have an understanding of how we're arriving onto our mats. And this can be in the aspect of emotion, the aspect of physicality, the aspect of the mental body. Just kind of try to drop in and see what you find. Some days in our practice, we're looking for a little bit more. Some days we need to back off. Just kind of listening for which avenue you need to take this morning. Bowing toward your own inner teacher, the heart on an exhale, bring the chin and chest together. Let your hands move down to your thighs and then raise the head and let the eyes come gently open. Welcome. So because we're taking uh, the class kind of in a scientific approach style with these targeted poses, I want to give us a good um, warm up with the six actions of the spine. So we will do that from the table pose. You can come onto your hands and knees. And bring your knees in alignment with your hips, bring your feet as wide as your knees. The wrists don't have to be under the shoulders, especially if you suffer from uh, joint pain in the wrist, you can slide the hands forward. But we'll start with a simple cat and cow. And on your exhalation, just kind of contouring the front body around an imaginary ball, rounding your spine. And on the inhale, arching the back. And remember the spine goes from the tailbone all the way to the base of the skull. So try to bring the full length of the spine into motion. Exhale, rounding, inhale arching. And just like when we were seated making inquiry, you're doing that here as well. You're exploring how this lands in your body and then you're going from there. You always have to begin where we are. There's no other way to begin. Lingering in those exhales, lingering in that cat pose, really exploring the duration of your breath. We're not in any rush here. Maybe starting to allow the breath to set a natural rhythm. Just twice more with the cat cow. And then arriving back to a neutral spine, back to a table position, inhaling Nice big breath here, exhale. You're gonna come into kidney squeeze. So swing your hips right, look to the left. And just imagine your spine here, it's in a crescent moon shape. 
Inhale, center. Exhale, push the hips left, look right. So it's kind of like wagging your tail, whatever image works for you. Inhale, center, exhale. The letter C shape with your spine. Again, just leaning into those exhalations. That's where the body really likes to offset tension. Inhales to transition to the other side. And again, visualize the tailbone, visualize the brain stem and see if you can connect the two points in your mind. Make sure the whole spine is moving here. And just once more to each side. And you'll come back to center again, make sure you're back in that table pose. And we'll finish with the last two actions, which are twisting action for the spine using thread the needle pose. So raise your right hand and just feed the length of the arm through the left limbs, come down onto the right shoulder and the right side of your head. You can always prop the head with a blanket if the floor is too low. And then slide your left hand forward, shift your weight to the right, and you might feel a nice opening across the upper back. That's a good sign. Turn your chest to the left. And we'll stay for five breaths here. Step your left hand closer to your body. You can inhale and just take the right arm out of position there and we'll set up second side. Go ahead and lift the left hand. Take the length of it. Palm is up through the space of those right limbs, resting on the left side of your head, taking the right hand forward, shifting weight to your left, and then just guiding those breaths into the upper left back area. Peeling the chest away from the floor toward the ceiling, using the exhales to coax the twist along. Gently stepping the right hand closer to your body. Inhale the left arm out of position. You can curl your toes under and make your way to standing. <clears throat> Once you're standing upright, let's see, I don't have a head. Sometimes my head gets chopped off here. Once you're standing upright, just put yourself in mountain pose. Joining the legs and feet if you can, otherwise keep a little bit of space between your feet. Shoulders are back. In line with the hips, adjust the skull back. If you sense your head is kind of dropping forward, putting some bad kind of weight or misalignment on the neck. With the eyes closed, lowering the gaze. And just welcoming yourself into the standing upright position kind of like a centering version of the seated position we started with. Giving the next couple of breaths your full attention. As you feel ready, opening the eyes. We're gonna start opening the back body with the ankles, the Achilles tendons. There's many ways to do that. What we are going to do today is use two blocks. And if you don't have two blocks, um, you're going to step on a blanket with your front feet. And if you don't have a blanket, you can always roll your mat up to create height underneath your front feet. What we're trying to do is get the heels lower than the ball mounds and toes. So if you do have two blocks, you can stand on them. And then you'll step back just slightly. And if you feel unstable here or insecure, grab a chair and just have a chair in front of you so you, you can feel confident you're not gonna uh, go anywhere that you're not trying to. And you're gonna drop the heels into a lower position. And again, if you're working with a blanket, you're just elevating the front feet to create the same effect. And see if you can drive the heels down you're trying to move weight a little bit more towards the centers of the feet and maybe even slightly pulling up with the toes. 
And if you're not getting much of a stretch or a sensation there, um, step back a little bit farther to drop the heels a little bit lower. Firming up your quadriceps, kind of plugging the kneecaps into the thighs, taking the tailbone in so you're not losing the alignment and letting gravity do the work for you. So we could do this another way, but I like this way because we're using gravity to our advantage. We can kind of take the effort piece out and just kind of hang the heels down. And taking just a couple more breaths to sink into the heels. Just two more breaths here. Elongating the Achilles tendons, the backs of the ankles. It's not a place we think about very often unless you've had an injury there. And then you're going to carefully be stepping down and you can move the blocks aside if you were using blocks. And we're going to move into the calf muscles. And now we're all going to use the blanket. And we're going to be stepping on the blanket with the two ball mounds and the 10 toes. And you want your feet hip distance just so you have a little more stability, a broader base. So I want you to think about kind of the, this, I don't know if everybody's done downhill skiing, but there's a tendency here to sink into your heels, which is not what we want. We want to shift our weight forward, kind of like you're skiing down a slope. So you're shifting your weight forward and you're really going to get a chance to, to kind of dig into the calf muscle here. So shift your weight into the ball mounds and the toes. Keep the heels really anchoring toward the floor. Keep the kneecaps tightened into the thighs. And just shift your weight forward as much as you can. Not at the cost of distorting the posture, but um, kind of carrying the weight into the front feet. Give it your breath. Once you find the stretch, we'll stay five deep breaths here. So we, we, we always work on a cycle in my classes, but I always try to give you a, a new approach to the same poses so that you're, you're getting a new perspective on the poses. So the idea today is we're gonna elongate the back body so that we can create a more enjoyable experience for the forward bends, especially the big one we're gonna do at the end. But go ahead and shift your weight to the heels and help yourself gently step off. You're gonna keep working with this blanket, but it's gonna to be to uh, support the heels in downward facing dog. So for some of us, there's a big space between the heels and the floor, in which case you might need two blankets. So you might not know yet, you probably don't. So just give yourself extra height. And then if you can reduce it, you can just throw it off to the side. And then you'll come to hands and knees. We're gonna work with opening the backs of the knees um, is the idea for downward facing dog. So you want to start in table pose with the, the toes and the ball mounds off the blankets. And when you press up into dog, the heels are supported. And if you find that the ball mounds are kind of not on the floor, you can step a little bit off so that you definitely want your ball mounds, big toe, small toe, ball mounds on the floor. And with the heels supported, notice how you can really start to open the backs of your knees. We've taken away the element of kind of the heels suspended in space, which can create tension. And now we can really press thigh bones back, shin bones back, and yawn open the backs of the knees. There's a tendency for weight to push forward here. So keep resisting that and pull the hips away from the wrist and then feed that length down the backs of your legs. So we climb from the wrists to the hips, we descend from the hips to the heels. You can inhale the upper body, climb, exhale, the descent of the lower half. And just stay five more breaths. Of course, this pose is opening many things, but your focus is on opening the backs of your knees. Last big exhale here. Inhale, tiptoe toward the wrists. Just dangle for a moment once you're on your feet fully. 
Grab your elbows, soften your knees, let your torso dangle like it's fully suspended. Let your skull dangle. One of the kind of nice um, pieces of forward bending practice is the brain rest. The brain can rest. So just imagine that your brain is floating inside your skull here. And now just kind of swing gently from side to side. Tapping into the hamstrings, which is where we're going next. Just kind of priming the hamstring. And then slow it down enough that you're able to stop. Drop your hands, bend your knees, take hold of your hips, use your stomach muscles to support your spine as you come up. And there's many ways to open hamstrings, to elongate the hamstrings. We are going to use one of my, what I consider to be the most effective is wide standing forward bend. So for a lot of us, we need some support either for the head or the hands or both. So I'm just um, gonna let you decide what you're gonna use. It could be nothing, it could be just the blocks, it could be just the head support of a couple blankets. <clears throat> could be everything. But you want to take a wide stance. <clears throat> Put your big toes on the same line and make sure your toes are in front of your heels. You're not turning out your feet. And then balance the weight of the feet. Your hands are either on the floor or on the blocks right underneath the shoulders. And you just wanna take care of the legs and feet first because they're really the, the roots of the pose. So balance the feet and then extend the torso fully lengthen the space between the rib cage and the pelvis. And then just allow yourself to again, drape the torso and suspend the skull, let the brain just float inside the head. Lower your blocks, you might not need blocks at that point, you might come down to the floor. The crown of the head is pointing toward the floor. Some of us might have the crown of the head supported by props. Eventually the hands, the fingertips will line up with the toe tips, but don't try to do that prematurely. And bring your attention to your hamstrings. Many of us are tight in the hamstrings. So we're just going to take, we're going to take a little more time here. Notice if your feet are clinging, that the clinging is kind of, you might feel like the feet are shrinking underneath you or you're rolling onto your small toe, or you're uprooting your inner feet. So just kind of grow the space, the surface area of the feet, you can always adjust the feet back into good alignment, good position. Keep the weight balanced from the backs of the heels to the fronts of the toes, right in the centers of the feet. Suck the outer ankle bones in. You're gonna give it five more really elongated exhalations. And when you come to the end of the next exhalation, start to move out of the pose, bring the hands forward, start to narrow the stance between the feet, heel, toe, walk yourself in. And then using your stomach muscles, taking hold of your hips, bring yourself upright. Join the feet, join the legs, come back to mountain pose, extending the arms, adjusting the skull right above the spine not tipping the chin up nor down, just a level chin with the floor, lengthen from the chin up to the base of the skull. And 
and then we'll move into a seated position. We've come from the hamstrings. Now we're going to move into the lower back. And we're, one of my very favorites for the lower back is head to knee pose. I like it because I can actually feel evidence. I always feel like my lower back is opening up and we work on this pose side to side. So you'll feel your lower back opening up with individual sides. So start with Dandasana, which is sitting on a blanket to keep the lower back upright, extending the legs forward and supporting the Danda, which is your spine by the power of your legs, lifting through the crown. You'll probably want either your block or a second blanket to support the bent knee side. So make sure you have something nearby. Take your eight fingers and just take them to the inner cord behind the right knee and drag the heel toward the upper inner thigh to create that Johnny Shoshasana shape. And if you see the right knee is floating, then you're gonna tuck something under there so that your leg feels supported and heavy like an anchor. One way you'll know is you're not gripping or holding in your inner thigh. You're not clamping in your hip. So we wanna feel released and surrendered on that right side. Okay, so <clears throat> I said this once we've set everything up. If you can't reach your foot, you have two options. You can either work with your hands, just kind of tense it up alongside your leg, or you could grab a strap and connect with your foot that way. So there's options, of course. But we're all gonna start just turning the torso toward the left leg because we tend to turn away from that leg. So the first piece of this pose is rotating the trunk to align breastbone to your straight leg. I'll try to keep that rotation as you either grab your strap, as you either tent up your fingertips or you grab your foot. And you're gonna pull back on your strap or your foot, or you're gonna kind of scrub your fingertips on the floor if that's what you're doing to get the breastbone forward. Take an inhale here on your exhale, extend the torso over the left leg. You might feel your shoulders are sloping. If your shoulders are sloping, do your best to align them level with the floor. Same with your sacrum, your lower back and your hips. Try to align the sacrum and hips. Anchor into your right leg, extend out through the inner knee and down to the floor. Feel your torso gently propelling across the left leg. Extending long on the inhale, finding more depth on the exhale. And now slowly see if you can sense your right lower back. There might be some tingling. There might be just a feeling of flesh pulling, stretching. There might be nothing and that's fine too. But bring awareness to the right lower back for the next five breaths. You're going to use an inhalation to start to bring yourself up and out of the pose, trying to protect that length you just cultivated in the torso. Stand your right knee up and extend your leg and bring yourself back to Dandasana, just kind of firming the legs together and into the floor, pressing your hands next to your hips, sitting up tall, feeling the really nice full extension of the torso that we try to maintain when we come into forward bending and we'll prepare for the second side. So you use your eight fingers behind the inner left knee, dragging the knee back, taking the heel into the upper inner thigh or close to that place, propping the left knee. Use your fingertips kind of on either, <clears throat> excuse me, either side of the right thigh to help you revolve the trunk slightly to the right so that we can align the breastbone with the right leg. Meanwhile, extending strongly out through the left leg, using that as an anchor. Take an in-breath here, and then either taking hold of your foot with the strap or hands, or crawling the fingers a little bit forward. We're gonna start the first stage of the forward bend, which is always the flat or concave lumbar stage. So we're not rounding the low back yet. 
Take a few breaths, either pulling on the foot or kind of dragging the fingertips toward you to help get the shoulder blades in, the chest open. And then exhale, bowing toward the right leg. Aligning the shoulders so they're more level. Keep reaching out energetically through the left knee. Every time you breathe in, try to grow the space of the torso along the leg. And then moving attention to the left lower back. Visualize your breath swirling around your left lower back. Three more nice big inhales here. And you'll use an inhalation to lengthen yourself up, bring your torso up, stand your knee up, extend your leg forward. Just give your legs a little bit of a bounce to refresh feel more refreshed in your legs. So hopefully you got a little bit of a feeling of access to the lower back there, maybe a little feeling of opening. We're gonna move into the mid back now and we're gonna take a version of child's pose that really helps the mid back elongate. So usually in child's pose, we have the knees wide and we're going to actually join the knees today so that we have the bulk of our own legs underneath us so that we are forced to round the upper back. If that is not comfortable for you, you can go knees wide and just bring support to your stomach area with something else like a bolster. Um, you might also want to fold something between your thighs and your calf muscles so that um, <clears throat> you can support your knees if there's any pain there with that deep flexion. You can always put something there to, to help you relieve any knee pain. So the knees are together, the feet are together. You're gonna to sit back in child's pose and then create a little pedestal either with your hands or a block or some other prop so that you can put your forehead down. It's way too far down to put it directly down. So you have to elevate the floor, bring the floor to the forehead by using some, some support. Each time you breathe in, Feel like your breath is like a fountain head and it's really kind of um, peaking at the mid back. So you're lengthening the breath up the torso, but then kind of fountain out across the mid back. We're forcing the breath into the back body and opening and broadening the mid back. We're gonna kind of build on this. We're gonna come into hair pose. The hair is the rabbit kind of hair, not the hair on your head. So what we wanna do, I wanna explain this before we do it, is we're gonna be moving onto the crown of the head and grabbing our heels. But with the crown of the head down, you're not putting a lot of pressure on your head. So I don't want you to kind of jam your head into the floor. It's just a gentle contact of the crown of the head. So let's sweep the hands back to the heels. You're gonna move your butt away from your heels so that you can move onto the top of the head. And then cup in your heels firmly, feel the back body invited to open. And we're gonna take a few breaths there. So it reminds me of like a small animal that thinks it's hidden just because it's, it can't see anything. It thinks it's hidden. <laughs> I always thought that was funny to see an animal try to hide it's out in the plain view but its head is tucked away. So just take a few breaths here.
And then you can sit back in embryo pose, which is just another version of child's pose with your hands kind of flapping open palms up next to the feet. And you can tuck something under your head if you need to so that you have a little bit of support there. You don't have to dunk your head super low. And then you can bring yourself up. So do a downward dog or a dandasana to relieve your legs before we come into our next pose. You can either come into downward dog to open the legs or a seated dandasana like we were doing before. And then you'll make your way into seated position and give yourself some height so you can keep the lower back upright, not rounded. And take any seated position that is comfortable that you feel kind of anchored into your legs with. And now we're gonna kind of address the upper back. What I think is one of the more effective poses for the upper back is the Garudasana, the eagle. So we get a big opening in the upper back. What I wanna say about that before we do it is it's not at the cost of collapsing the chest. So somehow we're gonna open the upper back and broaden it, but we're also gonna maintain a broad spread chest. So we don't wanna kind of collapse the chest um, to open the upper back. So see if you can do both. So we're going to take the arms in kind of a 90 degree elbow position with your elbows only as wide as your shoulders. And then we're gonna tuck the left elbow under the right elbow. And then for a modified position, you'll grab your shoulders with your hands. For less modified, somehow you'll bring your left fingers onto your right palm. You may not recognize which side is which, but your body will kind of feel which is the correct one to place there. And now we get the opening if we slightly elevate the elbows from either position. And you can tell that the chest wants to kind of cave in here. So keep the upper back broad, but also keep the chest broad. Your head, for some reason, likes to float forward in this pose, which is a misalignment. So keep the head right over the spine as if the spine travels up through the core of the skull. And it might be helpful for you to close the eyes because sometimes we get really obsessed with what we see or the eyes drag us forward. So you might close the eyes so you can sense this pose rather than be obsessed with the shape of it. And each time you breathe in, you're thinking about a sideways expansion of breath across the upper back. Keep the lower back long. Try not to fall into the belly and overarch the low back. Keep your jaw relaxed, unhinged, slackened and the gaze pointed down. And if you're losing that good sensation, just raise the elbows slightly. We'll stay on this side for three more breaths. And after this inhale, you can exhale, open the eyes, lower the elbows. Unwrap your arms, bring your hands behind you, clasping your hands together, roll your shoulders back and imagine you're holding something very, very heavy in your hands, which forces the arms to extend and the palms to open. And think about what that point of contact in your palms, think about that little area of kind of weight in your palms as an anchor and shoot your breastbone away from that anchor. Let your palms, your heavy palms, be an anchor for your breastbone to shoot kind of in a diagonal upward moving direction from the chest. And then soften out of it. Release your hands. Give your hands or wrists a shake or a rotation if you need to. And we'll do Garudasana on the other side. And just for fun, switch the crossing of the legs just so we're always kind of getting out of those habits that are kind of hardwired in the body. Take your elbows forward again. This time the right elbow will cradle the left. 
So you'll try to get right underneath left. You can again grab shoulders for more modified, or you can bring your right fingertips onto your left palm. Bring the navel in toward the spine like there's a little um, tether. So attach your navel to your spine. Adjust your skull to align with the spine. Maybe close the eyes. And breath by breath, just floating elbows up as that space widens across the upper back. Even imagining the breath finding its way underneath the shoulder blades. There's a lot of exciting upward moving energy here. So keep some attention on the legs staying heavy. And is your chest still broad or have you opened the upper back at the cost of collapsing the chest? Try to do both open chest, open upper back. Shoulders back. Two more inhales. And then after this one, you can lower the elbows, unwrap the arms again, clasping the hands, but this time go to the less favored interlocked position of your hands. Roll the shoulders back, extend the arms by opening the palms, straighten the elbows, really extending down toward the floor diagonally and then from the chest up toward the ceiling diagonally. Good. And now release your hands, place your hands softly on your knees, or your thighs somewhere. And just take the next five breaths, seeing if you can lift the sternum on the inhales, but on the exhale, see if you can not allow the sternum to drop back down. So we're gonna to start to move into the neck for the last piece before we put it all together. So there's Jalandhara Bandha, which is the neck lock, the highest aperture of the spine. We cap it, we seal it off, we can kind of siphon off the energy of the spine to conserve it. So after you spend a few moments raising the, the chest, keep it lifted and lower the chin toward the chest. Feeling like your chin is kind of snuggling into the pocket between the collarbones and it's okay if you don't have contact of the chin and chest, we're just trying to kind of close that angle. Gaze is pointed down toward the cheeks. Drop the shoulders, keep your lower back long. Remember the tether of the navel to the spine. Be right on top of your sitting bones. And remove any effort in the face. Sometimes you see this is the, this is the meditation pranayama position. Um, with the chin and chest together. And sometimes you see the practitioner is smiling and that's not an effortful smile. It's a smile that comes with passivity in the face being achieved. All the tightened kind of sinewy parts of the neck are just starting to break up a little bit, hopefully. Okay, now go ahead and lift your chin. We're gonna move into another, um, that was kind of prep for C2 Vanda Sarvangasana, which is the reclining version of the chin and chest coming together. So we're gonna come on to, this is where you want two blocks. So let's see, if you don't have two blocks, you can do a bridge pose with your knees bent, um, lifting your hips, and I'll show that in a moment. But we're going to set up for this pose a little bit just for comfort. So a blanket is nice to have for your head and shoulders. And when you use that blanket, make sure the head and shoulders are both on the blanket, that we don't have one off and one on, because that'll throw off the kind of the perfect symmetry of the pose. Um, if you have a strap, it can be nice to, to belt the thighs together so that your legs aren't tempted to just splay out and you don't have 
that extra piece of trying to keep your legs squeezing together. So it can give you a quieter experience, which is the kind of the point of the pose. So if you have a back rope tie or a belt, you can put that on right now. And it can really fit anywhere between your knees and hips, um, just as long as the, the overall effect of holding legs together is achieved. I should say, if you're doing bridge pose, you don't need to belt your legs. So if you don't have two blocks to work with and you're doing bridge pose, don't worry about the belt right now. <clears throat> and then come on to your back. I have those blocks available. One is gonna be near your feet and you can put it at some height, either low or medium height. <clears throat> and then with your knees bent, your head and shoulders on that blanket evenly, you can lift your hips and put your block at either the low or medium setting under the sacrum. And you want it running horizontally across the sacrum for most kind of contact surface area. And then whatever height you have here at the hips, extend your legs and place the heels on the block at the same height. If you're doing bridge pose, you don't have your blocks, your knees stay bent, you're gonna press the arms into the floor and lift the hips. And because that requires more effort, you can go up and down a few times, kind of at your own judgment of when you come up and when you come down. But you're looking for the chin and chest to come together. So if you're in this pose with the two blocks, C2 Bandha Sarvangasana, you're going to be palms up. You're gonna narrow the distance between the, rip, the wrists just slightly, which will help broaden the shoulders. And then you're encouraging the neck to elongate by keeping the chin and chest close. So some of my level two people are in here. <clears throat> Another wonderful way to lengthen the neck is of course, shoulder stand. So that would be a great option for you as well. So think about the same idea. Every time you breathe in, the sternum moves toward the chin. And every time you breathe out, we don't want it to pull back away. See if you can maintain that lift of the breastbone. There's some really nice images of this pose where the practitioner's chest is, is vertical. And again, here we're using gravity to open the neck, the weight of kind of gravity in the pose. And just five more breaths. And with the heels elevated, you'll begin to step down. And once your feet are down, it's safe to lift the hips and slide the block away from the lower back. And then you can try to unbuckle or belt your legs and free the legs. And just take a moment to widen the stance of your feet. Place your hands on your belly and rock your knees from side to side. So you'll be rolling on your inner and outer feet, but keep the feet wide, that's important. And as your knees go one way, your head goes the other. You're gonna look in the opposite direction so that you're completing a twist. And when you feel like you've released your spine, you can leave your knees one way, roll onto your side, and we're gonna set up for that Paschimottanasana C if we've achieved the goal of lengthening the back body enough to get a little more depth in the seated forward bend that is considered one of the more, um, one of the deepest forward bends. 
So the first thing we want to do is give our sitting bones enough support that we can keep the lower back upright and keep weight bearing on the sitting bones, not on the tailbone. Some of you will benefit from having a chair over your legs and resting your head on the edge of the chair seat. And then others can set up. What we want to do today is create head support. So like I said, it might require a chair. Uh, it might mean some combination of your props are going to be on your lap. Sometimes I do a block sandwich. So I put blanket, block blanket down. And then I might also add the addition of my arms. So you're going to have to kind of do a, a, a test run before we set up and come into it um, together. So you might have to just sit forward and see what your starting height is. And then once you feel like you have it, you can sit up. So the pose begins with Dandasana, reminding us of the intention to keep the spine in integrity to feel the spaciousness kind of follow through here. So press down into the floor with the hands, firm the legs into the floor. Try to lift your pelvis, rib cage, and skull. Come to the top of an in-breath and then raise the arms and just kind of encourage that length of your torso. On an exhale, first part of a forward bend is flat or concave lower back. So you're trying to really keep the length. And then at the very finish, you can find your full forward bend with the head supported somehow. Your legs continue to work here. So it's important that your toes are in line with your heels and that your legs are really pressed into the floor. So this is just like when we were standing and kind of grabbing our elbows in a rag doll position. The, the idea is to get the legs working so that the torso can be quiet, the skull can rest, the brain can passively rest inside the skull. And just kind of run your attention along all those points, starting at the ankles and then the calf muscles, backs of your knees, your hamstrings, your lower back, the breath moving into the mid back, the broadness of the upper back, the length of the back of the neck. We'll be here another two minutes. So there is the potential in forward bends to feel dull, to brood is another word that I think is kind of funny, but to brood in the mind. So these are signs that the body needs a little encouragement. One way you can bring this is to kind of scrub your heels towards your hip sockets, which in turn will elongate the torso over the legs. It'll kind of encourage that wave of energy. Scrubbing the heels, the heels that want to press away from the hip socket, scrub them toward the hips. It'll elongate the trunk. It'll bring some kind of renewed inspiration to this forward bend. So we don't brood. We don't become dull or sluggish. You might notice by now that some height needs to be reduced under the head. So just keep responding. We have another half a minute to go.
You start to lift your head and on an in breath, just follow that breath up, lifting your torso back upright. You can take, kind of take the props off of your legs, cross your legs. And we're just going to do a couple twists to each side before Shavasana. So go ahead and raise your arms. On an exhale, turn in one direction, crossing the body with one hand. Just squeezing out that one exhale, inhale, center. Exhale, other side. And do as many as you need. And when you think it's time, you can set yourself up for final resting pose. Lying down on your back. You might want to turn the lights down. You might want to find a blanket to cover up with. Maybe something to cover your eyes. You might put something behind your knees, which can help support the back, which might be a little uncomfortable after that deep forward bend. So again, just like we started and practiced listening for what the body is telling you. Giving yourself the support you need. And then lying down on your back and taking some time with the alignment of the pose to extend the legs out long, to bring the heels slightly wider than the hips. Open the arms enough that your inner arms don't touch your torso. Palms turned up. Rock your head gently and invite the chin to move toward the chest. With the eyes closed, looking toward your cheeks. Smoothing away any tension across the brow line and between the eyebrows. Softening all the tiny muscles that surround your eyes. Softening any tension in the eye sockets. Surrendering any effort in the tiny muscles that surround your lips. Relaxing your tongue all the way back to its root. Softening your cheeks. Slackening your jaw. Sensing your breath passing in and out of the nostrils. and over the soft tissue of the throat. Releasing the full length of your spine, brainstem to tailbone. Releasing the full weight of those twin anchors of your hips, allowing the pelvis to kind of hammock down with every exhale. Inviting the flesh of your legs to fall away from the bones. And 
For the next three cycles of breath, we're gonna inhale four counts, drop it to three if you need to, and exhale for six counts, reducing that as well if you need to. But the idea being to have a slightly longer exhalation. A smooth, steady breath in, you can move the breath up the entire body in your mind's eye. And a slow, steady breath out. Picking back up with your automatic breathing rhythm. Begin to welcome back small movements through your fingers and toes, then the ankles and wrists, then the knees and elbows. Bring yourself to one side of your body and just rest there for a few more moments. Not in any rush. Moving at the speed of presence. And gently, slowly bringing yourself up to seated. And when you find yourself seated, Join your hands together in front of your heart, extending the fingertips out and up. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose and let it go. From the place within me that I know to be divine, I honor that place within each of you. Namaste. Hope to see some of you back on Friday. Have a great week. Take good care. <laughs>